All right, Chris Hall here. Good to have you on uh, with us today on our program. And today on our program, a very special guest, uh, Drew Sheehan, uh, tied in, senior tied in for the University of Georgia, the two-time defending national champions. We never kind of get, you know, tired of saying that. Uh, but Drew uh, so graciously has uh, joined us on our program. As we record this, it's Tuesday evening. And for those of you who might know a little something about the practice schedule for the University of Georgia in the week prior to a football game, uh, you kind of know, and you've heard it referred to as being Bloody Tuesday. Uh, it's it's the it's the day when I guess preparations for the coming opponent really get ramped up, and uh, a lot of blows are delivered on Bloody Tuesday. Uh, Drew uh, Sheehan with us. Drew, first of all, thank you for being with us on our program. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful to be here. Now, uh, uh, tell me, uh, why do why do we call it Bloody Tuesday? I mean, you know, just kind of give your own description of why that is true. I, I would say from my own understanding, you know, it's just, I mean, it's probably one of the harder days of the week. You know, it probably is the hardest day of the week. Um, you know, our, we just try to do a good job of, like, making practice so hard that, like, you know, hopefully the games on Saturday are easier and, you know, our coaches do a really good job of preparing us. But Tuesday alone is definitely more of one of the more physical days where we're really hitting and working on our fits and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, as you come into the uh, to where we're recording, no blood is uh, uh, prevalent on you or evident on you. So you you must have had a good day of practice then. Huh? It's a great <laughs> it's a good uh, a good name, I would say, for it. But luckily, nobody usually has blood. So let's keep it that way. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So uh, we're into the, uh, you know, and by the way, you know, you, you're a bulldog. And I, I got to tell you, all the guys on the team, you, you guys are just heroes to us in Bulldog Nation. I, I got to tell you, do do you understand that? I mean, do, do you get that? Uh, is that evident to you that, you know, a, a national, two-time national champions, do you guys know how, how and I, I hope you do, how special you are? To everybody in Bulldog Nation, uh, this football team? Um, it's definitely been a special moment for, you know, all my family and friends and, you know, my girlfriend and not everybody, her family as well, because her family all went to Georgia. So um, I would say, like, I think it'll be something that'll hit me later in life for sure, especially when I'm done playing. I think, uh, I guess at the time being, I feel like I've done a, a good job of just being in the moment and enjoying it. Um, you know, it doesn't really hit me sometimes because it's like, you know, when you go against some of the best players in the country, it's like, ah, well, you're not very good at football. Just be, And then it's like, oh, my gosh, we're going against arguably the best, you know, better best players in the country, you know, and that comes, yeah. you know, SEC football alone, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think, like, sometimes at the dog walk, I'll be like, wow, this is cool. Like, everybody's just, you know, cheering at us, high-fiving us and stuff. Yeah, I've been uh, to the dog walk many times, and uh, that is a very special time. That's kind of cool. That kind of uh, to walk amongst all those, and everybody's wanting to shake your hand and get your picture, hundred percent, and uh, and all of that. Now, for the past two seasons, I got to tell you, I get into the games. You know, when I'm watching the games, and I've watched the national championship game, and so I'm sitting there in my recliner in my living room. And I'm coaching. You know, I'm saying, okay, we need to do this, we need to do that. Uh, you know, my wife of many years, bless her heart, she says, you you know, they can't hear you, hey, but it doesn't matter. I'm coaching, you know. And then when, when that final second ticks off and Georgia wins, the emotion is just, you know, at the Hall household, the emotion is just something. You know, I'm hugging my wife. We're high-fiving. You know, it's past midnight, for heaven's sakes. Uh, but we can't go to sleep, you know, for the rest of tonight. Now, that's how we feel. You know, and that, that's how folks like I feel in the living room. What is it like to be on the sideline when that last second hits and you've won it all? I, you've done it twice now. What, can you describe that? What is that like? I remember the first year um, <laughs> when, when uh, you know, after Keeley got the pick six, I would say, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm, I guess, you know, there's still time on the clock. But, you know, it's like that feeling, like, oh, my gosh, I'm probably about to be a national champion. I do remember taking out my phone after when all the confetti started flying down and uh, Coach Smart went to go meet uh, Nick Saban at the midfield. I have it in in my phone somewhere on some video of me almost running over Nick Saban. Like, on my phone, you can see his feet as I'm just celebrating and cheering and stuff. So, um, 
it's definitely a feeling like like no other. I've never the serotonin for sure is up there. Well, and uh, you know it's happened twice, and of course you know I, hey if you've done it twice why can't you do it three in a row? And uh, that's what we're hoping for. So uh, you know we're three games into the season. I got to tell you. You guys made our hearts beat a little fast last Saturday in that uh, first half. We were sitting there thinking, no, this is not supposed to be the way it is. But, you know, South Carolina is a good football team. And and personally, I love Shane Beamer and uh, the way he recruits and the way he coaches. He just, you know, he kind of is what he is. Shane Beamer is. As Spencer Rattler, a great quarterback. Uh, You know, so you kind of stepped up in competition uh, you know, you don't want to diss anybody, but, you know, you kind of stepped up in the uh, competition, up in competition uh, with South Carolina. It, it it really is something when you play an SEC team, whether you're at home or away, that's just a different deal, isn't it? Uh, you, you, it, it the intensity is really something, isn't it? 100%. I mean, I just, you know, you know, thinking about it, like the SEC is full of great athletes across the board, even if it's a team that isn't necessarily maybe even in contention to go to a bowl game, even let alone that's still an SEC team and they have really good athletes. Um, something I always think about is like, even when like, you know, Alabama and Auburn have played, you know, in the Iron Bowl, like there'll be a year sometimes with one of the teams is like six and six sometimes and like, you know, 500 team and they come out and compete with whoever, whichever one is like compete for a national championship that year. And I think that's something like it too. And I think, you know, we got a big, you know, I think everybody's coming, you know, after us. Cause I mean, no matter who the, if you're ranked, I feel like you're going to get everybody's best shot. And, um, you know, all the teams that we've played so far this year have played, played us really well, I feel like. And, you know, every, every, I think from the past two years, you know, we've really blown people out. I think it's, you know, every year's a different team. So you're going to win in different ways, I would say. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and of course, playing in the rain, is that fun? I mean, it looks like it's fun. I'm sorry. You know, back in the day when we would play in the yard, uh, you know, with, as kids and it rained, we didn't stop. Is it, is it, is it kind of fun to play in the rain? It definitely <laughs> is. I mean, I remember when we played Tennessee last year, that was really hype. Um, that was a really cool experience. And then, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, I feel like the energy gets higher and the ball security becomes more of a factor for both teams, you know? So everybody's slipping and sliding all over the field. <laughs> now you're you're in the tight end room, and the rumor is that you you are the reason why Brock Bowers is the guy that he is today. I mean, you know that that's the rumor now. I, I, I'm not going to ask you to confirm that or not, uh, but uh, you know that you're in a quite an impressive tight end room, and uh, you know it, it's what's it like to be amongst all of those uh, guys? And I know, listen, you're a senior. Uh, and you're a leader on this team. And I, I can't imagine that they do lean upon you and look uh, to you for uh, support. What is it like to be in the tight end room at the University of Georgia? Um, it's been a blessing for sure because, I mean, I feel like at the uh, end of the day, the only reason why I'm even on the team here is because of uh, Coach Hartley. I mean, he gave me an opportunity coming in when I transferred from uh, Kennesaw State. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just very grateful that he gave me an opportunity to be here. And um, I'm – I think I think a lot of walk-ons enjoy being in his room because you know he coaches everybody the same and he has a relationship outside of football with all of us. I mean, I think sooner or later he's going to be a a power five offensive coordinator or a head coach coming up soon. He's definitely got what it takes. And uh, but being in the tight end room, I mean, guys like John Fitzpatrick, Darnell Washington, and obviously Brock Bowers, like that's been a great joy like like just wow it's like crazy to think like you know over the past couple of years we've had the arguably the best tight end room in the country so it's been very cool and like you know I think a lot of people ask me like always like you know what are the guys like or whatever but I think all of us are pretty much you know normal guys at the end of the day that you know like to talk about and do normal things you know what I mean like they're all pretty good guys you know so it's been awesome yeah. it's been awesome I'm definitely very grateful to be in that room with those guys because even outside of football we got all got good relationships with each other and amongst the team the team chemistry since I've been here has been been amazing like we all you know all from different places even around the country and um even the world because Brett Thorson's from Australia but uh but like we all get along really well 
So have you, uh, has, has Brett, uh, has he tried grits yet? I mean, you, you can't be Southern, you know, without, you know, grits, you gotta, you got your dri- grits. So what about Brett and, and what about Brock? You know, he's from California and Napa Valley. Have these guys actually gotten into the Southern culture? Have they tried grits yet? That's, that's the burning question. I'd be willing to bet if I had to bet money on it, those guys would definitely have, they've definitely tried grits. I would say, I would say, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, it just feels like Brock's from the Southeast. I don't know. It just feels that way. Just being around him. And then, uh, you know, Brett's very down to earth and always down to, you know, try new things and stuff. Obviously, if he came across the uh, the whole world to come here to play football. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you got to go to Huddle House. I mean, if you're in the South, you know, you got to go to Huddle House and you're going to get some grit. So, now you're from, uh, you're from Woodstock, Georgia. You started out your college football career at Kennesaw State. And then you kind of paddle through the COVID stuff and all of that. Uh, you're, you're a senior at, uh, you know, on this, uh, this, uh, bull, bulldog team, uh, just uh, talk a little bit about your journey and uh, maybe the joy that you found in your journey. What about your journey, uh, to where you are now with the university of Georgia? So my, uh, my dad's been a high school football coach for roughly like 25 to 30 years. Um, we moved down to Georgia in 2005 from, uh, Massachusetts. So most of my family lives in the Northeast, but we have a couple, they're all spread out, um, we came down here really because my parents wanted me and my sister just to have a better, you know, better opportunity at, you know, sports and school, I would say. And, um, you know, I grew up in uh, Cherokee County going to Sequoia High School. And then my junior and senior year, I went to Woodstock. Um, and then, I mean, I always had that goal that I wanted to play college sports. And, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to do it at the highest level. And that's no disrespect to, you know, any anything below Division One, but... I just felt like I really wanted to be a part of something greater. And, you know, it always was in my mind, like, I wanted to play Power 5 football and be a part of it. And, uh, you know, it happened where I got a couple opportunities out of out of high school to go to – I got two preferred walk-ons. One was to Kennesaw State, Tennessee Tech, and then the rest were Division Two, Division Three, And the other one I was going to possibly go to was Birmingham Southern. Those were probably my top three schools. And I ended up going to Kennesaw State because it was close to home and – at the time, you know, it was the best opportunity. And, you know, it worked out where I got to come to Georgia after I was able to transfer with transfer credits. And I I mean, I, I had that mind I was going to walk on, you know, right when I got here. And that's what happened. I got, you know, very blessed to do that. But I, I would say, like, strong connection with my family playing sports. And, you know, my dad's, you know, pushed me and helped me and all the way through. And I mean, I think that's one of the big reasons why I'm here. And the support from, you know, my mom and sister and all my extended family. Very grateful for that. Yeah. I, you know, and, and here's the thing, Drew, you know, in, in 20 years, you're going to have a reunion. You're going to come back to Sanford stadium and there's going to be the 20 year celebration of these national championship teams. Uh, and that's going to be cool, you know, to be able to come back and to be celebrated after Georgia has won several national championships now, you know, we we'll put that in there. But can you can you imagine that? Can you imagine maybe fast forward twenty years and coming back and being celebrated on the field at uh, Sanford Stadium as a national champion? It, that's kind of cool to think about, isn't it? It's going to be probably uh, pretty electric, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what the stadium looks like. I'm sure they're going to keep making renovations, so who knows if there'll be more people even in the stands, you know, somewhere or another, if they can even stack more <laughs> uh, bleachers on there. So I, I'm, I'm very, it'll be very cool to do that. And, you know, um, you know, it will be cool for my family to experience that when that does occur. So. And, 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 and it probably coach Kirby smart will be right there to welcome you <laughs> as he continues to be the coach at the university of Georgia. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, my, my wife worries about Coach Smart. She says, does he ever relax? You know, she watches him on the sideline and, you know, the intensity that he has. Uh, but I, I can imagine he's a great coach to uh, to play for. He's a defender of his players and of his program. I know that. Uh, but she worries. And I assure her, listen, he relaxes. But when it comes to football, it's, it's business. And it is business for him, uh, yes, right? Yes, 100%. I mean, he, um, you know, he's very fair with his decisions he makes within a lot of different ways. Um, he does the best what's, he does what's best for the players in every category. Like, 
even through, you know, NIL or draft or anything like that. I mean, he does what's best for his guys. Um, definitely one of the more motivational coaches I've ever been been around. Like, you know, he's always bumping his team up. Like, you know, like he's never too negative. You know, like it's always positive and he gets them going though. Don't get me wrong. Get, oh, gets yeah. us going. And, uh, you know, I, I also, it's also been really cool to see because, you know, a lot of teams, you know, I guess tend to fall off, you know, after you win, you know, there's not, there's a lot, there's not a lot of dynasties as much as you think there are in just sports in general. And, um, you know, he, he's still hungry and I don't think that's ever going to change. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, well, what, what's, what's, after college now, what's the dream after college? Uh, what, what do you see yourself doing as you graduate? And uh, that, what's next uh, for uh, Drew Sheehan? Um, I would say, like, right now, um, definitely right now at least. Um, also, like, another reason why I wanted to go to a, a big Division One school is because I'm trying to potentially do college or NFL coaching. Um, that's probably the goal right now. Um, and I think that's, that's what I'm going to try to do. I mean... I've always had in my mind I want to be a, a big-time head coach and do all the cool things they do. And uh, I think I think that's what I'm going to try to do right away. But if that doesn't, you know, pan out or, you know, I get burnt out on that, I think I'm going to do something in sports for sure because there's a lot of jobs out there. Or, um, you know, I'll just do something else. But right now I think that's the goal. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to bet against you. I, I, I wouldn't be – you know, I uh, shocked to see you on the sidelines at uh, a major college or maybe, even, as you say, even in the NFL. Now, you know, the, you may not know this about me, Drew, but I am a relationship expert. And I understand off camera, off camera is is your girlfriend, right? And uh, so, uh, can she just kind of step in for a minute? Uh, I, I'd be, we'd, we'd love to to uh to uh see her your your significant other hey, hey. now what what is your name my name is anna burnett <laughs> girlfriend of drew right. sheehan yeah <laughs> okay all right so how long uh, have you guys been uh together as boyfriend and girlfriend do you, do you want me to do the talking i'll let you take that one. Oh, okay <laughs> um we've been we've been dating since uh, our senior year of high school so Ooh. yeah we've we uh you know we've, we've dated throughout college um yeah, it so it would have been about like four to five years probably now. Yeah, about four to five years. Now, uh, does she coach you up? I mean, you know, does, does she critique you and, and coach you up? She, you know, when everybody else is, you know, oh, Drew, 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 she'll, she'll put me straight. That's for sure. That's for sure. She, she's actually probably a better athlete than me. She, uh, she originally came to UGA to uh, run cross country and track. Um, oh, wow. after about a year and a half, she had to like b basically medically retire cause she kept getting stress fractures for about two, two and a half years, I would say. Um, so she, she, uh, joined a sorority and, you know, is finishing up school. She's going to be a teacher. So she's, uh, she's oh, really cool. excited about that. But yeah, honestly, like she still lifts weights and I mean, she, she's very athletic. She's probably in better shape and more athletic than I am. Listen, uh, here, here, here's here's the test of a good relationship. I've been married for a long time uh, to the love of my life, and uh, you know we we have those discussions. And and my wife, she always wants to help me, and sometimes that help is a little rough to hear, but she she wants to help me. So you, she's a keeper. So my my advice to you is, you know, keep her. Okay, I will. And, I will. If she me, lets me, if she lets me. Yeah, I, and and maybe if you're lucky, she'll keep you. Okay, <laughs> That's very, very valid, very valid. <laughs> All right. Well, Drew uh, Sheehan has been with us. Uh, Drew's a senior uh, for the University of Georgia on the uh, Bulldog uh, uh, team, uh, tied in uh, from uh, well, originally from Massachusetts. Now I didn't know that uh, about you. So you guys originally were from Massachusetts. So the question is, have you tried grit? A hundred percent. I'm all about that Southern hospitality. I, I mean, I would say like, you know, I mean, I would consider I, I take both for sure. But I mean, I feel like more of the South for me because like that's just where I've grown up, you know. Yeah, I got you, man. Well, Drew, thank you for being with us uh, on our program. You've been a delight to talk to. Uh, we're going to be watching you. I hope to see you out there on the field. You know, yeah, right? maybe, maybe this Saturday. We'll see. And, <laughs> and uh, that we're, we're going to be pulling uh, 
for you, not only this year with the Bulldogs, but in the years to come. I, I think you're going to, I think you've got a very bright future ahead of you. And it's exciting to see what's going to happen with uh, Drew and uh, in the days to come. So thank you for being with yes, us on our program. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Nice meeting you.